Hi, my name is Wayne Goldsmith, and welcome to part three of my special series of the Soft Skills of Swimming Coaching podcast. You know, swimming coaches, like everybody, are drawn to things you can see and you can feel and you can easily measure. And, and, and that means, naturally enough, when you go to courses and conferences and workshops and talking to other coaches, the discussion is generally around the things you can see, you can feel, you can observe. So we always talk about butterfly technique, or we talk about backstroke starts, or we talk about diving. We talk about those easy to see, tangible, measurable elements of swimming coaching, but just as important, and I would argue even more important than the things that you can see that are real, that are tangible, are the immeasurable things, the things that are difficult to see. The things that have the greatest value cost nothing, but it's important to learn how to coach those. One of the things that I talk about quite often is mental toughness, is mental toughness. Mental toughness is a little bit like the other topics that we've talked about in the last two podcasts, confidence and commitment. Mental toughness is one of those things that people think they've got an idea on, they, they think they know what it is when they sit or they think that athlete's mentally tough and that one's not so much. But when you actually say, define mental toughness and more importantly, define mental toughness and coach mental toughness. The majority of coaches will say, well, mental toughness comes from just hard physical training. And look, sure, that's got part to do with it. It is part of the overall concept of mental toughness, but there's a lot more to it. Because I've seen very, very fit athletes who are not mentally tough. Athletes who are incredibly well conditioned from doing months and months of hard practice, but who are not mentally tough when they need to perform to their best when and where it matters. I was talking with a football coach many years ago and he said, Wayne, we'd like you to do some work with our players on mental toughness. And I said, I'm happy to do that, but what is mental toughness? What do you want me to actually do? What are you asking me to do for you? And he said, well, look, for us, a mentally tough player can do their job no matter what happens to them, that they can get tired or they can get pushed around or even get hurt a little bit or things can go wrong and they do their job the way that they need to do it. And that got me thinking about mental toughness and he was absolutely right that it's so much more than standing up and being aggressive. And quite often you can be mentally tough and not show any signs of aggressive. Quite often I see mentally tough people being very calm, very rational, very logical, composed, under pressure. But it was important working with this football team that we came up with a working definition of mental toughness so we could measure it, we could coach it. And we worked together with the coaching team. And in the end, we came up with a bit of a model for mental toughness. Mental toughness is when a player, when a swimmer, can do what they need to do, when and where it matters, no matter what happens to them or what's happening around them. And I'll, I'll say that again. A mentally tough swimmer is a swimmer who can do what they need to do when and where it matters to the standard that's required, no matter what's happening to them or around them. Now let's look at that in context. So a swimmer goes to their first national championships. When they go to their first national championships, obviously they're a little bit nervous and concerned and stressed and all those types of things. And we talked a lot about that in part one of this series when we discussed the concept of confidence. But in terms of mental toughness, as per our definition, that a swimmer is mentally tough when they can do what they need to do to the high standard that they've set, when and where it matters, no matter what happens to them or what's happening around them. They go to their national championships. What we need to see them do is swim at the speed that they've been training at with the skill level that we've been practicing, so the number of strokes or the stroke rate or the breathing control, particularly in crunch times around those last 10 or 15 metres at the finish. And no matter what's happening around them, swimmers are making full starts, if there's a little bit of commotion around the start-finish area, if there's a lot of noise, if they're feeling uncomfortable, if they're feeling difficult, if their goggles fell off, they can still do what they need to do, no matter what's happening to them or what's happening around them. And when you think about that, what that actually means in terms of coaching is making sure that your training environment is as challenging and demanding 
as the competition that you're preparing for, that your training situation, your pool and your practices, make sure that they are as at least or even greater than the, the challenges and demands that you present to the swimmers, physical, mental, technical, tactical, the challenges and demands in your training setting are equal to or greater than the competition that they're preparing for. Now, a simple way of looking at this when I talk to coaches in real terms is say, if you're going to a state championship, Plan, prepare, and execute your practice sessions as if you were going to national championships. If you're going to national championships, plan, prepare, and execute your practices as if you were going to international level standard. In effect, you're preparing the athlete to perform in an environment that's more challenging and tougher and more difficult than the one that they're going to be swimming at. You're preparing them physically, mentally, technically and tactically to withstand the rigors and the challenges and the demands of a level of performance, a level of competition, which is greater than that that they'll actually be swimming at. And that has wonderful effects on so many areas of swimming. Importantly, coaches too, if you're trying to develop mental toughness in swimming, is to make sure that your practices incorporate so many elements of training, the skill and the speed than just doing the minimum standard. So I'll give you an example. Quite often coaches will say, right, your goal at state championships is to swim 30 seconds for a 50 freestyle. And they repeat the physical of 30 seconds and 30 seconds so they can do the 30 seconds in practice consistently. But then be thinking about, all right, now, how do I teach them to swim 30 second pace early in the morning? So they're learning to go fast for heats. So you're preparing them to swim fast. One of the things I say to coaches quite often about mental toughness, and coaches will say, oh, my swimmers are really good, but they fail at state championships, so they don't swim fast at national championships. I say, guys, look, very few swimmers can't swim the time that they aim for. It's just hard training and good skills, good technique consistency and commitment to achievement. But what we fail to do is to prepare them to swim that time under the stresses and rigors and demands of the competitive environment. And it's amazing how many swimmers go to their first national championships or even their first Olympic games and don't equal their own personal best time. All those swimmers have been prepared very well physically, but we didn't coach them to perform that physical ability, to demonstrate their physical capability under the emotional pressure and stress of the competitive environment. We didn't prepare them to win in the environment of the competition. We just prepared them to do, execute the physiology of the speed, and there's a massive difference. So coaches, mental toughness, you can coach mental toughness. It's about the way you design your practices to ensure that the swimmers are experiencing demands and challenges in practice, which are greater than, which are as more demanding, more challenging, more difficult than the competition that they're preparing for. And to be coaching them not just to do the speed, to swim the time, to do the splits, to be coaching them to be able to perform that skill, that speed, to be able to perform in that environment, to be able to execute that swim when and where it matters, to the standard that they're aiming for, no matter what's happening to them or around them. I hope you've enjoyed part three of our series on the soft skills of swimming coaching. If you like this, please check out my soft skills of swimming coaching online learning course. It's a wonderful course where confidence, commitment, leadership, team development are all discussed in detail around a video, some text documents, some great downloads, and a whole bunch of other material. Check out my soft skills of swimming coaching today.